Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. This is Real True Street Crime. And I want to tell y'all something about the fat man and the fat man's organization and how he ran it and ran it so successfully for so long at so high of a level and why the federal government said he was one of the most organized organizations they ever got inside and cracked. So let me give you rules from Eddie Jackson what made his organization so hard to crack and last so long. Number one, number one rule, my father did not serve white people, period. And he didn't want nobody in his crew to serve white folks. Ask the black dispatch, Rudolph, any of them that's still around, Courtney. Eddie Jackson did not serve white people at all, not one, not one white person has my father served. His second rule was nothing to be sold over on 8 Mile, across 8 Mile, as Coleman Young say, anywhere in Detroit, nowhere across 8 Mile in the suburbs, L. Brooks County, you don't want to do that. That's going to spark a serious FBI investigation, which you're going to spark anyways. But his rules was he did not sell the white people, not one you never seen white people come to his joint because if he did, he'd fire your motherfucking ass if you was running it. So he didn't allow you to serve white people. But it was one exception. One exception. And he had told him, if I was you, I would not be serving these white folks. But he had one that he let it go on. And the money was so great, he told him, all money ain't good money, d -Wick. D-Wick, all money ain't good money, baby. So D-Wick was the only member of the Jackson crew who served white folks. And Pops told him, you shouldn't do that. And let me give you D-Wick's story. D-Wick was right there on Jefferson. A stone throw from Gross Point. Sweet ass apartment, everything. D-Wick had rented right outside of Gross Point. Soon as you leave his place and go up half a mile or so, you're in the Gross Point. Pops told him that's the wrong place to be slinging from. And D. Wick was selling to all white kids. College students, D. Wick was moving the motherfucking crowd, baby. D. Wick was moving the motherfucking crowd right there on Jefferson and St. Clair, Shores right there outside of Gross Point. He right there. Soon as you leave his place, half mile up, you in the Gross Point. I could take you to the apartment, a brown brick apartment on the right hand side. If you coming from that way, it would be on the left hand side. But if you're in Detroit coming on down, it would be on the right hand side before you get to Gross Point on Jefferson. I could take you to the exact building where all of this played out. And this is another one. Real true street crime, straight out of the magazine, straight out of the Detroit newspaper. This story comes straight from the Detroit newspaper. If you can, look it up. d -Wick was his name. He lived right there at Stone's Throw on Jefferson from Gross Point. Now, let me tell you his story. The fat man had bought d because he was doing so good moving the crowd, serving them white folks. And Pops had told him, man, you shouldn't be serving them goddamn crackers. Them goddamn red goddamn pecker woods is what Pops used to call them. Them goddamn pecker woods, you shouldn't be serving. Them goddamn red pecker woods, you shouldn't be serving them, D-Wick, because them goddamn pecker woods is going to be the death of you. No, fat man, these motherfuckers cash me out, boy. All these young college students all these white folks, all of them coming to D-Wick, right there on Jefferson, right outside of Gross Point. D-Wick rolling like 40 going north and some. So now Pops done bought the nigga Cadillac because he's sure enough moving the crowd. D-Wick, you got to have a Cadillac, man. Nigga, come on. They take D-Wick out there, buy D-Wick a Cadillac, brand new Cadillac. D-Wick take the Cadillac, had to run back to the house for a minute. He said, I got some business to take care of. He going home to take care of some business and drop off the Cadillac. Pops and Black Butch is going to come pick him up. 
They celebrating just buying D with a brand new Cadillac. So they celebrating blowing cocaine. These motherfuckers party. D Wick, we'll be right over to pick you up. So they swing by right there, pick D Wick up in his place. D Wick jump in the Cadillac with them. Now here's what none of them knew. D Wick, my father, and none of them. If D Wick had stayed there and my father and them hadn't came right around then in that area, when D Wick got home, and started serving the white folks he had waiting on him, the big folk was waiting on him too. So when d Wick go in there and serve the white boy, run back out, jump in the car with Pop and them, big folk was watching all this shit because they got d Wick under surveillance. Now they peep d Wick come home, drop the new Cadillac off, so they know they got the right nigga now. Oh, that's the nigga we want. This nigga here, this nigga here, this nigga here. Wait till we get this nigga here. So D. Wickton jumped in the caddy with Black Butch and Pops. Big Four is waiting at his house for him. They praying that the fat man, Black Butch and D. Wick, come back in the D. Wick's apartment from wherever they just took off going. So now D. Wickton jumped in the car with them. They blowing cocaine. They ride to Belle Isle. Straight up Jefferson all the way to Belle Isle. Ride around Belle Isle laughing, talking shit, blowing cocaine, having the times of their life. But d Wick don't know the surprise he got waiting for him when he get motherfucking home. So now they done rolled around. Bell out, blowing cocaine, partying, talking shit. d Wick, they get back to this place. Butch, fat man, y'all come on in. Let's finish the party here and call some bitches at my place. Now, d Wick's place they roll from selling these white folks. So Pops had better sense than that. d Wick, I ain't coming in your goddamn apartment and you sell all them goddamn white folks. So Pops told him, Check you later, baby. We'll be back. We'll get back with you later tonight. We'll go and hang out and finish this down at the 20 Grand or UBQs of Mr. Kelly's. We'll make a night of it and close all the goddamn clubs down. Because when I walk in the club, all the drinks is on Eddie Jackson. All these niggas who live, UBQs, Mr. Kelly's, 20 Grand. Ask him when Eddie Jackson walk in there if he ain't buy drinks for everybody in the motherfucking club. Drinks on me. Drinks on the house. Like you used to see in them Wild Wild West pictures. Pops used to love that shit when they walk in the little saloon and say, Drinks on me. The whole house. And that's what my father used to love to do anytime he walked in the club. Drinks on me. Whatever you're drinking, the fat man got you. And the drinks would be on him. And the party would be on him. Them niggas be in there blowing cocaine. Motherfuckers peep that shit, man. Come over there. Man, the party start there. And see, back then, orgies was legal. See, Puff Daddy in the wrong air for what the fuck he was doing. He should have been in the 70s with the fat man, Eddie Jackson, having them goddamn cocaine orgies, and he wouldn't be sitting where the fuck he's sitting now. So they would go around the UBQs, Mr. Kelly, all the spots. Them niggas be in there drinking, blowing cocaine. Bitches be begging to leave with them. Fuck it, let's go hang. Pops go take them motherfuckers to a place and have a party of their goddamn lifetime. And as I told y'all, the barber would always find them goddamn parties. My man said, I wouldn't miss one of them goddamn parties your dad threw, man. Because it was the party of a lifetime. So I say, let me finish the story. Now they coming from Bell Isle. They get back to D-Wick's house. D-Wick say that my father and Butch, come on in the house, man. Let's finish getting high and party and we can go on out from here. Pop said, no, nah, I ain't coming in there. Plus, I got to go freshen up and change clothes before I go out and throw the diamonds on. Baby, I got to shine when I go out. So now, they drop D-Wick off. D-Wick walk in his apartment. When he walk in his apartment, Big Four was already in it. When he walk in that bitch, four big motherfuckers waiting on him. When he walk in there like, whoa, y'all done broken my shit. Nah, nigga, we the Big Four. And we here to break your motherfucking neck, nigga, for selling to these white folks. This is what the fuck you get from selling to white folks in my father's day. You get your motherfucking neck broke. So now Big Foe is waiting on D-Wick when he walk in the apartment. Praying that black butcher my father had walked in with him. They had all three of them niggas. If black butcher and daddy had walked in there with D-Wick, the story probably would have been over from there. Probably wouldn't have been no more stories about the fat man, Eddie Jackson. Because Big Four was waiting on him in D-Wick's apartment. So D-Wick walking that bitch all by himself. 
Where them two niggas at you was riding with? One of them looked like the fat man, Big Bear Cola. See, the Detroit police, 19 named my father, Big Bear Cola. That's the name that Big Four gave him. That looked like Big Bear Cola to me. Was that Big Bear Cola, nigga? And y'all out here selling dope? Damn near gross point to all these white kids? And white kids coming up to his motherfucking apartment? Nigga, they took d -Wick. They put d -Wick in handcuffs. Now, d -Wick say, these motherfucking big four, four of them, they used to call them big four. I'm going to tell you why they call them big four. All four of these motherfuckers were six, eight, or six, nine. All four of them look like they ain't do nothing but pump on. All four of them. That's why they call them the big four, because they used to ride a Chrysler Diplomat all four of them in it wasn't nowhere to put your ass, nigga. When they get through with you, they leaving you in the fucking alley damn near dead or dead, nigga. That's how the big four play the game, nigga. Wasn't no room for you in their car. That little diplomat didn't hold but four big niggas. And you is going to be pavement motherfucking tragedy out there in them alleys after big four get through with your ass. So now that's the how big four ran. And they waiting on the fat man and black butch, and they got d -Wick's ass. So they handcuffed d -Wick. d -Wick say one of them picked him up. This how strong this motherfucker was, man. He picked d -Wick up by his feet, lifted d -Wick all the way up, turned d -Wick over, and dropped him on his motherfucking head. That is how strong this 6869 Big Four white man was. Nigga, he picked D-Wick up, put him in handcuffs, picked that nigga up by his legs, lifted him all the way up, turned him over, and dropped him on his motherfucking head and broke his motherfucking neck. Now, D-Wick's neck is motherfucking broke. They kicking him, stomping him, and before they left after they put a royal ass beating on him, a royal ass beating, a royal ass beating, Broke his goddamn neck, stomped him, beat the shit out of him, and before they left, they pissed on D Wick. D Wick said them motherfuckers, when they was walking out the door, after they pissed on him and they leaving out the door, he said the piss sort of woke him up by it being warm. D Wick said when he woke up, he really couldn't feel his neck. After they dropped him on his motherfucking neck and broke his neck, but D Wick was a smart motherfucking man. And very smart of a man, D. Wick was. D. Wick knew he had to keep that neck perfectly like this from being paralyzed. Because if he turned that bitch and moved that bitch, he paralyzed. D. Wick kept his neck perfectly straight, just like this, while he drove that new Cadillac to the hospital, smelling like piss, and walk in there, beat. They don't even know how he made it. They looked at him when he got to the hospital and said, man, how did you get here? He said, man, I drove. The doctors, when they got D-Wick in there and got D-Wick got the strain on his neck and shit, they said, you're a lucky man. Because if you had to move your neck, you'd have been paralyzed. They asked, the doctors asked D-Wick, how did you know that? How did you know not to move your neck not one inch? D-Wick said he couldn't even turn to the side when he was driving. He just drove looking straight. If he hit something, funny, he hit something. Then they come get him the ambulance. But he drove himself to the hospital, never moving his neck. And the doctors told him that was a miracle. The doctors look at D-Wick and told him, nigga, you a miracle. First, they didn't kill you. And enough, you had enough motherfuckers since not to move your neck. Because if you have moved your neck at all, that's why when you get hurt, they tell you, lay down, don't move. When they wait for the stretcher, let them come get you. That's why. Because sometimes if you don't just lay there and let a motherfucker come get you, you can hurt yourself worse by moving. And that's what D-Wick would have did if he had to move that motherfucking neck. But he was in so much motherfucking pain. Dope was in the house. He didn't want the police to come back. But he didn't know there wasn't no dope money there because Big Four had cleaned his ass out. He had took all the money in the dope from him. Took all that shit. D-Wick leave out of that bitch like this praying to get to the hospital. Get to the hospital and they tell you, you're a miracle, man. Because you should be paralyzed. Not aftermath. Newspaper. Everybody came out seeing D. Wick. And he told a story about Big Folk. And Coleman Young, the mayor. Senator at that time. 
heard this story about the big foe and what they had did to deal with. How they had broke this man's neck, beat him senselessly, and then pissed on that man as if he was less than human. Dewey got his revenge back because he sued the motherfuckers, cashed out. Dewey sued the motherfuckers. It's all in the Detroit news. Look it up. This is another one. Here's another one. Straight out of the newspaper. Real true street crime. Straight out of the newspaper. That's what this is. And them street corner boys is going to come at you. Because they tell me where there's a will, there's a way. That's what they always told me. Where there's a will, there's a way. And I got the will, and the way is going to be them street corner boys. So cash app, Eddie Baby 22 Subscribe, share, like, and thank you too. I'm working on a motherfucking magazine online. I'm working on a book. I'm working on trying to get my father's interview. I got a lot going on. And thank you all. Cash app, Eddie Baby 22 Subscribe, share, like, and thank you too. And here's one from back in the 70s. The big four stress. And it wasn't nowhere to kill your ass. The only place you was going, you was finna be stressed out there in the back of the goddamn alley, hoping somebody come see your ass and call for help to get your motherfucking ass out of there. Big Four was worse than the wrecking crew putting niggas in them alleys. Big wrecking, the wrecking crew had a thing. They would break both your arms and both your legs and throw you in the dumpster. Now, how you gonna get out the dumpster? Both your arms broke and both your legs broke. And all I used to hear when the wrecking crew used to wreck niggas like that, you would hear a nigga yelling and screaming from the dumpster. You would hear his voice just yelling out, who in the fuck is this in the dumpster? Why in the fuck won't he get out the dumpster? Dollar went back there and got that motherfucker out the dumpster. Man, they had rented this nigga's house from him, told him to paint it, fix it up. This nigga took the money, smoked crack, and the wrecking crew wrecked the fuck out of that boy, man. Wrecked that boy, broke both his arms, both his legs, and put him in a goddamn dumpster. He back there in the dumpster yelling and screaming, somebody, anybody, help, get me out this motherfucker. Because he couldn't get himself out. Both his arms was broke and both his legs was broke. And that's how the wrecking crew used to break a nigga up. So subscribe, share, like, and plenty more coming for you. And if you ain't did it yet, subscribe, share, like, thank you, cash out, Eddie Baby 22 Stop over there and take a listen to us on Crime Town Kingpin's Kids on Spotify. And we got the actual FBI officer laying that one down for you. So if you're tired of hearing me, go let Ron Gear Valley tell you the story about the fat man, Eddie Jackson, over there on Spotify. Crime Town Kingpin's Kids. I'm out. Cash out, Eddie Baby 22 Subscribe, share, like, and thank you too. Peace and love.